Hi everyone and welcome to another painting tutorial. In this video I show you how I painted Neuschwanstein Castle, which was a just wonderful commission that I was very lucky to get. Not only was this something that I always wanted to do, creating a landscape painting and also using such bright colors, it was also quite the difficult challenge for me, because I never painted anything like that before. Real quick before we start, if you want to learn more, I have lots of tutorials and real time lessons available for you on my Patreon site, in which I teach you my technique in detail and step by step. In many of my videos you even get to see my mixing process in a second camera window and you can download the reference photo too. On top of that, all videos are downloadable and you can keep them forever. For just $5 a month you get instant access to over 70 painting videos. That's pretty neat, right? And for only $10 you get access to another whole library of underrated but even longer real-time videos videos of all my recent artworks. If you have seen some of my works and you always wondered how I did them, then this pledge is the right one for you. Just visit my website and browse the tutorial section. There you will find a list of all lessons and real-time videos available. So what are you waiting for? Up your painting game and join me now on patreon.com slash also, the Neuschwanstein Castle painting process is available as a 3 hour and 40 minutes long almost real time video for my $10 reward patrons. The video shows the process at a 200% time lapse, which looks almost like real time, but you can also change the video speed to 50% in order to slow it down and show it at real time. I also included a second camera window in parts of the video so that you can see my mixing process and like all my videos, you can download the video and keep it forever. The format is much larger than the usual sizes of my watercolor paintings, because only in this size I could include all the details that I wanted and I just think that the Neuschwanstein castle or castles in general just deserve to be painted really big. For other artists this size might be very small, but for me and for a watercolor and gouache painting it's pretty big. So I was very excited to start this painting and I'm also super excited to show it now to you and to talk about the process of course. So before I started this huge project it was very important to me to plan the complete process. The first thing that I did was to mentally segment the painting into several parts. We have the background and the sky part, we have the bright green tree part, we have the complete castle part, which all the thousands of details, and then we have the blending between the trees and the castle, which I know I mustn't underestimate because getting this blending wrong can easily destroy the whole perspective and depth of the painting. So I had four parts that I planned to paint individually. For my reference photo I used a photo of Castle Neuschwanstein and changed the colors until I had this super bright, almost Disney-esque color palette, which I love so much, and found a crop that I thought would complement the castle and showed it in the best way. And in order to transfer the reference photo onto my watercolor paper, I printed my reference photo out on normal printing paper and used graphite transferring paper to trace it onto watercolor paper. But man, this was so much more work than I had ever anticipated. I thought, yeah, well, the details would take some time, but it took so long. I think tracing the entire painting took at least one hour, if not even more. And I was very, very glad that I could trace it instead of drawing it all with my hands. <laughs> this would probably have taken me a week. And as always, you will find all materials that I used to create this painting in the description of the video. I I started the painting by wetting the entire sky and mountain area and then adding blues and pinks to build a first pastel tone layer. Then I added more blue to the sky and also worked on the pink areas on the castle part. I work on both of these segments at the same time because for example I want to have the sky dry slightly and then I just work on the castle in the meantime and then when the sky is dried a bit more then I can add more blue or pink to 
to it. Sometimes I used just a little bit too much water and I want it to be dry because if there's too much water making gradients is not possible but you will have nice abstract effects and I just want both. I want a nice gradient, I also want abstract effects. I just wait until there is the right amount of water on my paper. Then in the castle we have two main color areas I would say. So we have the pink and we have a yellow tone. The pink areas of the castle are those which don't get direct sunlight and the yellow areas of the castle are those which are completely in the sunlight and are almost white. There's also a front of the castle that has inherently a different color. It's like an orange. So as a base color, I just chose yellow to give everything a yellow underpaint. And for the other areas of the castle, I chose this pink tone. Then after having filled out some of the major areas of the castle, I continued by filling out the tree part of the painting. And here we have this super, super bright green and a lot of dark areas as well so I just decided to wet the entire area and chose a very bright green tone and just filled it all in. I also used a flat brush to render some of the shapes and forms of the trees. Right from the start I didn't plan to paint any of this foliage in a detailed manner because I just believe it would totally mess up the painting. Instead I wanted the castle to be the most detailed thing and I wanted the trees to be more calm and providing a balance to the details. So I tried to simplify all the shadows and forms that I could find and use large brushes instead of small brushes. I also plan to use a lot of gouache in the final stages of the painting process so I didn't expect that the tree part would look very convincing in the beginning of the painting. Then after I was finished with the tree area I again continued with the sky and I added more blue layers to the sky because the first layers will always fade and even if it looks amazing in the first layer as soon as the watercolor dries it will fade and it doesn't look good at all so I had to add more layers. Then I used my hairdryer and let it dry because I'm super impatient when I paint with watercolors and then I continued with the mountains and I think I never painted mountains with watercolors before and it was really really challenging because I knew that when I paint with watercolors the first couple of layers look the most fresh and the most beautiful and with the mountains I really just had one or two tries to get them right and especially with this technique where I lay the mountains on top of the sky I don't have really a lot of room to correct any mistakes so I took the same flat brush that I used for the trees and tried to get the best mountain forms and shapes that I could paint and also try to leave gaps for the light parts and luckily it worked out and I am very very happy how the mountains turned out and I also managed to not overwork them and just really let them be and preserve the freshness of the first couple of layers. I also paid a lot of attention to the color values and to the blue tones because the mountains are far in the distance because there's so much air between the mountains and the viewer the mountains are very blue and everything that is more closer to the viewer is not that blue and the mountains that are even farther in the distance you can't really detect them so I uh, had to make a really light version of blue to render them correctly and then came the most complicated part ever and I think it was the most complicated thing that I've painted in my entire life as a painter at least both watercolors I think <laughs> and these were the thousands of details in the towers and the turrets and the windows and the orioles and just everything that you can find in a medieval castle and I was a little bit lost and I thought I just start with some color that I can find everywhere in the castle and this was this purple tone like a blue purple shadow tone this was one of the colors that I could find everywhere and I just filled all the areas out where I could find this blue purple tone. So if I'm going to do another castle or another piece of architecture, I would always look for a couple of main colors which 
with I can start and then after having filled them in continue with colors that are less common. I continued the process and worked with colors that are most common and then went to colors that are less common and here and there I would focus on one specific area and after having done that having added all the purples I focused on the shadows of the front of the castle and just worked on a couple of details there because I was curious on how this would look when it's finished because I was impatient and I wanted to know and after that I continued with the highest tower of the castle and this tower is kind of the centerpiece of the castle so I had to be super super careful to to make it symmetrical and to use very fine and clear lines with architecture I believe it is important that you have clean and straight lines and that you also very clearly indicate where shadows are and where light is so I try to do that and I always thought before every brush stroke what I wanted to do and I also try to use as less brush strokes and as less layers as possible to preserve the freshness of the initial paint because I really adore the blues and the greens. It is also very important to have enough and not too much water. If you use too much water and you want to paint a clean line, it just doesn't work. The line gets wobbly and the water stays on the surface and if you don't use enough water, you will have a very dark color and you can't really draw a line, for example, with your brush. And and after having finished the central tower of the castle, I basically just filled out every single detail that I could find in the castle with the same technique. It took, I think, two days for me to paint the castle and I worked on all the little shadows and all the countless windows that you can see and especially the roofs were challenging because there are so many and I couldn't really detect what was what, which roof belongs to which tower. So I just concentrated and focused and tried to render all those details while trying to paint very clear and straight lines and not make anything wobbly or smudgy. What I also noticed after having worked on the windows was that the initial blue tone that I chose was the perfect one. I decided to make the windows darker to render it like the reference photo but actually they look more beautiful if they are painted in a light blue tone so luckily because I have gouache I could add a light blue tone on every individual window and could make them lighter. While I was working on the castle, I also always worked on the blending between the castle and the tree line. Every tree cast a shadow on the castle and when I was painting the shadows, I tried to make them as accurate as possible so that they would really well blend into the tree line. It is easy to just concentrate on the castle and totally forget the trees around it and just let some gaps of white at the borders of the castle. So in order to get an accurate blending between the trees and the castle, I did not leave any white gaps at the borders of the castle. Instead, I really tried to render the exact shadows that I could see on my reference photo. And after having finished the castle and all the shadows, that it needed, I could finally work on the trees, which was the last part of this process and it worked out so well. I just used blue, green and yellow gouache paint from Lascaux in the larger bottles. All my other gouache paint comes in little tubes, but for this castle I bought larger bottles of gouache because I didn't know how much I would use. And um, as you can see on the video, the yellow and the green I used is very bright and they fit perfectly perfectly to the color palette of the castle. And what I did is just using a flat brush and add some striked effects to the trees. I try to not render what I see. Instead, I tried to, like in the beginning, simplify the shades of the trees and also alternate between small and large brush strokes and also between different shades of green. And then in the end, I chose a beautiful purple to add in the shadow areas so that you can find the same purple in the castle and in the trees. And in the end, I also splashed some green gouache color over the tree line, which fits 
really beautiful i really liked how it looked and um i thought the trees would be more difficult to paint but it really wasn't that difficult so i think the key to making these kinds of effects is to simplify forms and just really think before you do any brush strokes just in when i was starting out as a painter i would just paint and paint and don't really think what i do but now when i use oil paints or gouache i really think what i wanted to do with every brush stroke that i do and this is something that just comes after time i'm painting since 10 years now or it's even longer than 10 years i think it's almost 13 years and it just takes so much time and if you don't get it right in the beginning it's totally normal <laughs> it's totally normal just give it time and work on your skills and just do things that you really love to paint like this castle i really really enjoyed the painting process and i think i learned a lot i'm very excited i hope that i can paint something similar in future too yeah um this was a process of the Neuschwanstein Castle. I hope you liked it. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, don't forget to leave a comment and give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. And I hope you are inspired and I see you in the next one. Bye bye!